You're listening to the Morphology Podcast. Thanks for tuning in to the Morphology Podcast, aka Murph here to share interviews about biking experiences from cyclists who have pedaled to places all over. Each week, we'll get to know new people and explore new destinations to ride your bike. As you listen to these adventures, you're going to wonder, why haven't I done that yet? Well, today meet Jamie from Canada. He is a self-proclaimed bagger who got deep into bike touring a few years back and really hasn't looked back. Last year, he loaded all his gear onto his surly long haul trucker and took about six weeks to bike all the way across Canada. This year, in 2023, his big adventure plan was to bike across Iowa as part of Ragbri. He decided to make it an even bigger adventure by riding his bike from Canada, down through Minnesota, and then to the start of Ragbri in Sioux City, Iowa. He's on to tell us about his travels by bike, the connections he's made, and the kindness of people, no matter where he goes. All right, a very warm welcome to a super fun guy I was lucky enough to meet on Ragbri. It's Jamie from Canada. <laughs> Thanks, Merv. How are you doing? Good, good, good. I'm just back for, for a couple nights here. I've been uh, go, go, go since Ragbri, and I'm finally getting a chance to catch my breath. And uh, I know we exchanged contacts at, at Ragbri, and it was easy to find me, Jamie from Canada, on Instagram, and yeah. send me a message, and we scheduled this to to catch up and let you know how the experience went. Yeah, and so listeners are going to learn this if they didn't meet you on Ragbri, but you do all kinds of bike packing and bike touring, and I I'm going to confess I got sucked into a more than more time than I thought I would spend reading all of your blogs. And I was pleasantly entertained, surprised. I had a blast reading through them. I felt like I was almost with you on Ragbri with some of those blogs. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I uploaded lots of lots to my story. I, I hardly ever use Instagram unless I'm on a, a big trip. And then my friends and my family, they have such a fun time following along with me on my journey that I try to just send them as much content as possible. And I think I might have hit a story max limit. Oh. <laughs> one of the days, too, with 30 posts. I didn't even know I could do that. Oh, wow, wow. Well, before we get into some of your bike packing adventures, um, obviously, if your name is, or you go by Jamie from Canada, you probably are from Canada or live in Canada. But tell the listeners where you live and, like, what cycling is like there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I live in Western Canada in British Columbia. Uh, most people uh, think of Vancouver, and I'm in the interior part of British Columbia, about four or five hours from uh, the coast or from Vancouver. So uh, living in the interior, there is a lot of access to different types of cycling because there's uh, road racing uh, like Grand Fondos mm. around here, but there's also rail trails around here that you can like get off the beaten track and get out of the valley and get on a trail and find yourself... Uh, some pretty pretty easy access, uh, BC provincial park grounds and, and campgrounds. And based on um, at least when I saw you and the photos that I saw from your Ragbri experience, which everybody knows what Ragbri is, but I'll say it anyway. It's a bike ride across Iowa. That's uh, not a race; it's a tour, um, about five hundred miles. But the bike you had had all of your gear on it. Is that your normal way of biking, or is that just something special when you go on tours? Uh, no, I, uh, it's a hybrid uh, Surly long haul trucker. Mm. Uh, I custom uh, got built a uh, inside frame pack, so that was quite unique for Ragbri. I got quite a few comments on that, and that was a locally made um, pack that I took a picture of my bicycle for uh, frame, and I sent it to the the bag manufacturer and he projects it on a screen on his shop and he makes the pack to the exact specifications the measurements that you send him and he'll make you the custom pack without ever even seeing your bike Mm. so i really enjoyed that frame pack for all my uh um items for my bicycle 
so I'm a, a bagger and I carry everything on my bike. So the middle frame pack uh, is a great spot for my tent poles, actually. Oh, yeah. That's right. My tent poles. I also have a frame pack that I had custom made by someone local in my uh, hometown here. And you're right. So many comments because it's such like a it's a nice use of that space. Um, and I'm super, super short. I know that you're super, super tall. So I don't have a ton of room in there. But man, you can fit, you know, rain jackets okay. and uh, spare tubes and all of that good stuff. And the bottom triangle fits perfectly for a pie container. Really? <laughs> I found that out. You can point it right down there, and when you're not keeping pie in it, you can keep all your spare nuts and bolts and your spare doodads that you need and your band-aids at the bottom of your frame bag, too. So wait. Okay, so Ragbri is known for incredibly good homemade pie. Are you saying you brought your own pie container for pie? <laughs> that was a hot tip that I took off the Facebook <laughs> newbies group. Nice. Somebody had the great tip of bringing along a pie container, so I did. Uh, but I actually carried more pizza in it than uh, pie because all the pie was individually uh, wrapped. So it was in its own container, so I didn't really need to use it on pie as much as I did with leftover pieces of pizza. Okay, so it still came in handy. That's I'm going to have to put that in the back of my head for a future. That's a hot tip yeah. for the listener. That is a really hot tip. Okay, so... This year, I wasn't able to, but in years past, what I do, I live in the center of Iowa, and I do what you do. I'm a bagger. I load up my bag, my panniers, and I leave from my home, pedal to the start of Ragbri, so you kind of go backwards, and then get to Ragbri, and then ride across, you know, river to river, and then uh, something I haven't done yet, but I want to, is then at the end to pedal back home. But so you did something similar this year. So you've got to tell us, um, you know, you, you did this epic tour before the tour, uh, to get you to rag Bri. So tell us about it. Yeah. Yeah. The reason why I chose rag Bri was that, uh, I got into touring four years ago. Uh, I've done a big ish trip every year since. And last year, I actually took the time to cycle across Canada. Mm. And it took me uh, just about six weeks to complete with a friend from uh, the town I live in right now, Kelowna, all the way to the Atlantic Ocean and St. John's, New Brunswick. And I completed that. And I was in my dream phase about what's the next big thing I was going to do. And I researched uh, and heard about Ragbri and kind of got obsessed with it and made it my next goal. So... That's what brought me to Ragbri was was having this vision after the after my big cross Canada bicycle tour. So I last year I rode across the United States and it took me I think it was 64 days and it was fun because I did the southern tier so I went around, across the bottom of the United States and you know every day that it was just like a different terrain and all you know small towns and big towns and all kinds of things so in canada like uh, i'm sorry i'm you know i haven't been to canada to know what it's like there but is it kind of the same thing where you experience every kind of terrain and every kind of weather season yeah for sure there's a lot of different geography i would say just a lot less towns like, whereas uh, on one day of Ragbri, we'd pass through five or six towns. Mm -hmm. uh, on a trip in Canada, maybe uh, some of the wider open spaces, you're only going to pass through maybe uh, two towns a day. Oh, okay. And that's making, you're still, still making your 80 miles a day, yeah. 100 miles a day on average. Wow. Okay. Well, um, I won't spoil it, but I'm still in awe of your very first day going from Canada to, I think it was to Minnesota, because you did, like, epic amounts of miles. But will you kind of give us, like, some highlights of, you know, where you started in Canada and where you ended up? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, well, calling myself Jamie from Canada, I really wanted to do something epic and make it to the start line of Rag by Briar. From Canada, I thought would just be the most amazing thing to do. So I looked uh, at, at, at Sioux City on a map, and I looked just straight north 
of Sioux City and you run into Winnipeg, Manitoba, which is nowhere near where I live. Mm. But I found a cheap um, airline ticket for $80. I added a bike box on top of that for another 80 Canadian dollars. Uh, and I packed up my bicycle, flew to the airport in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, built my bike at the airport, oh my uh, stayed at a friend's house. I got a really good start on the day at 5.30 a.m. Uh, without crowds or anybody beside me on the start line, just a whole bunch of solitude. And I had southerly winds. And so when the winds are, when the tailwinds are good, you take them. And when yeah. the tailwinds are not so good, you try to plan around it and do the best that you can. But uh, I had good winds the whole first day and I managed to stay 14 hours in the saddle. And I broke my new personal best, even from crossing Canada. And I managed to cycle for 286 kilometers. And for my American friends, that's 178 miles. Wow. Wow. Like So I was super stoked going through Minnesota. And I used to think Saskatchewan was quite flat and boring. But I got into northwestern Minnesota and following the Red River, it was so flat. Uh, like I'm talking zero elevation. So uh, this the southerly winds and the, the full frame pack on my bike as a, almost as a sail. I was just flying. And when the days are good, yeah, you got to take them. So uh, I I had a, a burger at this uh, town called Crookston. Uh, pretty small place. There's a University of Minnesota campus there. And I had a burger that continued on another hour, made it to this town of like I believe in omens, and this was <laughs> this town was called Climax, Climax, Minnesota. So I thought that was a highlight of the day, and I better stop there and I better rest because it's just a perfect way to end the day. But wow, it- I had two days of tailwinds and two days of headwinds, and I got to Sioux City in five days crossing through Minnesota. So I actually got there two days earlier than I anticipated, wow. and I had a bunch of time to check it out, uh, the expo grounds, find a good campground get two days of rest i actually sprung a leaky tire in between those two days so i was able to address that and fix that and And get ready for the big rag riot yeah and i was gonna say that first day you know um yes you had tailwinds but you still were spending 14 hours in the saddle did that did your body hold up for that because you still had three days more plus all of rag plus wherever else you went yeah I just think it's the training and there's not like I have a Brooks saddle and they say it takes 500 miles to break it in. And I really don't think of it as a seat per se, but a saddle that you get comfortable with. And uh, I rode with a chamois pad for the first uh, three quarters of my trip. But by the end of it, uh, it's just so I'm so used to the saddle that I even prefer less material, Mm -hmm. the better. So just one pair of shorts to the seat, to the saddle. And you told us a little bit about your bike, and you call yourself a bagger, which I do as well. Will you explain to listeners what that means? Just that you carry all your items with you, and that you're a lot less tied to the baggage truck, which I think is a the main advantage to being a bagger. So you'll have your tent, and you'll have your sleeping bag, and I had a little stove that I could boil water with, which was useful, more useful the first part of the trip when I was by myself crossing through Minnesota. It wasn't uh, as necessary. It was definitely a luxury item when I was able to cook a coffee in the morning because I woke up early and my friend is scrambling just to get packed up. But I've been doing it for the last week and a half, so I had a little bit of practice. But I met a friend of mine. He was a first-timer as well. He flew in from uh, Portland, Oregon, Mm. and he wasn't well-trained, and he wasn't bagging it. So we did have to battle with the baggage truck to check his bags and retrieve them at the end of the day. So I wasn't completely um, free from the baggage truck, mm-hmm. and that's something I would try to make do next time. Yeah, the baggage truck, uh, for those who don't know, it's a um, it's included in your registration. So basically, uh, Rag Bride Crew, they have these huge semis, and they haul your gear, your luggage, your tent, everything from one morning to the end of the day, and then you pick it back up and put your tent up. But when you have thousands and thousands of people also doing the same thing, 
Um, I know that they're for sure the first day there's long, long lines because they actually weigh those bags. So I'm sure that you experienced that as well. Yeah. So I found a great campsite on the other side of the Missouri river on the Nebraska side, there was a city park called scenic park. And, uh, it was a very short bicycle ride to the, to the three semi trucks where you would load the bags. Mm -hmm. So in the morning we thought we had a good start on the day. We had a nice peaceful morning. There was a AC private bathroom at this, at this park and there's nobody else around. It was a great score. We cross over the bridge back into Iowa and we get to the baggage truck and my jaw just hits the floor. (sighs) How long these lineups are for these baggage trucks. So uh, I stood at the, at the front of the line. My buddy starts going to see how long the lineup is and, in that five minutes that we were waiting, I think 300, 400 people passed us and got in line ahead of us. Oh, my gosh. A big learning curve uh, at that moment. But that was the worst of the lineups the whole week was this initial weigh-in of your bags the very first morning. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, so any, you know, on that, uh, you were solo, right, going from Canada to Sioux City? Yeah, yeah, I, I did. Uh, the five days it took me following the Red River, and I stayed in uh, one of the towns in North Dakota, Wapaman, mm-hmm. and then Madison, Wisconsin, or no, sorry, Madison, sorry, Madison, Minnesota, and then uh, Pipestone, Minnesota, and then I pushed it to get into Sioux City. Got it. Any interesting story of people or some of those places that you stopped through? Uh, Minnesota was was pretty uh, relaxed. It was hot, so I was just sort of like rag ride from shade spot to shade spot. Lots of churches, uh, lots of room the drivers in Minnesota gave me. Mm-hmm. I didn't really have a problem with that. The highway that I followed was really good. It was this Highway 75, uh, Trail of Kings. So it's not an interstate, but it's a scenic byway. And I was able to catch a lot of speed, and, and it was good shoulders on that. Uh, but one cool story was as soon as I passed from the sign from Welcome into Iowa and I get into Rock Rapids, Iowa, I seen a, a garage sale sign and I said to myself, if I can see this garage sale from the road, I'm going to stop and take a rest and try to fill up my water bottle or else I'm just going to keep going. And sure enough, there was this garage, estate sale three doors down from this sign off the main highway. And I go and I take 10 minutes to relax and get in the shade and just chit chat with these guys. And you know what? They're the friendliest people. Uh, they had no problem spilling on my water bottles. They asked me my route that I was taking. And uh, I said, well, I'm just sticking to the highway. They said, well, it gets busier here uh, once you get into Iowa on this highway. Why don't you think about taking this secondary road? And uh, gave me really good advice there. And they weren't too pushy. They're like, it's, you, you can do what you want. But I ended up taking this advice at yeah. the highway to myself to get into the Sioux Center area down there. And uh, they were just amazing. So that was like the first touch of hospitality was as soon as I crossed the border into into Iowa State. That's awesome. I thought you were going to tell me that you found some, you know, cool luxury item that you didn't need, but you bought it at the estate sale. <laughs> Well, I had a little room with all my bags, but I'm pretty cheesy about what I take. Yeah, I was just going to say, like that cook stove, when you mentioned it, I went, oh, man, that's definitely a luxury item on Ragbri because there are so many opportunities for food, um, but it is nice to have. Oh, yeah. In Carroll, we were relaxing on the street, just in the shade, watching the band outside of the Carroll Brewing Company, and there's a guy, yeah, with his stove set up just brewing up a coffee, a cup of coffee. I think it's the one night a year where you could camp on the city hall grass and <laughs> nobody would say anything. <laughs> you could maybe get away with it. You know? You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I think beggars try to look for. Like whether it's staying near the local pool or whether it's staying uh, somewhere private near a friend's house, they just have the flexibility to do that. Yeah. In my experience, you know, just, you look so interesting as a bagger because you're on a bicycle, but you have all these bags and 
you know, your bike looks heavy. And so most people are really intrigued by that. And then when you start to tell the story, you know, before you know it, like one year we were bagging out to Ragbri and there were 12 of us and it was super, super hot. And we ended up in a bar in the evening. So we ate, started drinking. And before you knew it, the owners of the bar were like, you guys can't camp outside. It's too hot. So they let us sleep inside the bar, oh. which I don't know if I would ever do that in like real life because I'm sure it was a dirty, filthy place. But man, it was like the best air conditioning. And and then, you know, uh-huh. we woke up the next morning and they were making breakfast for us. So it was like the best bagger story. Well, that sort of sounds like the origins of Virginia from Canada story because it comes from uh, this website, couchsurfing.com. Mm. And that was my username back on that website. And I traveled around and I was one of the first, one of the few people that were using this site back in the day. And that's how people knew me was Jamie from Canada. So I stepped it up uh, at a conference one year and printed off Instead of my full name, I printed off Jamie from Canada, and all my international friends just loved it. And uh, people don't forget your name when you say Jamie from Canada; they, they stick with them. It's like my personal brand. Yeah, so and, and I, I have made the, something out of it. I have the sticker on my laptop now, Jamie from Canada. Like people ever ask amazing, me, amazing. I'm like, I know that guy. I know Jamie from Canada. Well, I printed off. Uh, 50 of them and I didn't come back with a single one oh, wow. but the one I was most most proud about giving oh was uh uh Daniel from the movie uh shift the rag Brad documentary because he put out a call on uh I don't know if it was Facebook or some other social media but for people to bring him stickers to trade with him so <sighs> after I went to the Riviera theater on day zero of the uh, expo there of rag Bri, I went and, and there was tables of, of a lot of the stars from the movie. So I got to see them and, and I seen Daniel. And the first thing I did was, uh, Daniel, I got a sticker for you. And he was super <laughs> happy. And I gave it to him. And he didn't hesitate. He ripped the back off of it right away and stuck it on his pannier of his, of his bike without hesitation. Nice. And gave me uh, a couple stickers of his own. So that was a pretty special moment. Oh, that uh, is awesome. Yeah. And you also got to meet Adam Lineberry and his son, right? Yeah, Liam and his dad, and then uh, Tori is is Daniel's mom, and then the other uh, lady from the movie. I got to, I met her on the road actually. Oh, nice! Yeah, for those who haven't uh, seen uh, the documentary, it's called Shift, and it's it's celebrating the fiftieth uh, Ragbri, but it's not really about like the history of Ragbri. It's more about. Um, individual stories of people who do ragbri so it's really amazing and it's cool that you got to see some of the stars yeah 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 and then later in the evening uh i was looking for you again actually and you were in and out of that tent all day but ryan van duzer wasn't and i was able to go up to him and wait in line and and ask him for a selfie and he was just such a pro yeah. he was so nice to me he took the best selfie with me and he was just super high energy and I'm all about that. It was awesome. It was such a boost going into day one kind of thing. And I think you, didn't you have, didn't you get one of the Doozer t-shirts that he was uh, selling? I pre, that's right. That's right. I pre-ordered one of the Priority Bicycles uh, pink t-shirts and I was running Team Doozer all week, all week. Not cotton during the day, but after I showered and I was getting ready to party, I was part of Team Doozer for sure. That's awesome. That is awesome. Okay. So you leave Canada, you pedal your way, you make it to Sioux City, you're solo (laughs) for those first few days, and now you are in a mass of thousands and thousands of cyclists. So how was that experience riding across Iowa? Well, just after the baggage truck and the start line, like you start going and it's not a 100 feet and there's bicycle repair tents. Like (laughs) there's all these people, it's bound to somebody's going to get a flat right off the bat. And people do and there's lineups and it was just so many people off the bat and we got out of Sioux City there and uh, within the first hour and a half there's a farm and there's hundreds of bicycles they're all laid down on the yard of this farm and it's just the biggest party you've ever seen there's <laughs> lineups for the beer and there's brats and there's more uh, repair tents and 
my buddy had a problem with his pedals, so we were trying to get that looked at, and we were trying a bunch of different tents. We ended up uh, using half our first day just getting in lineups for these wow. uh, repair tents because they were so popular with people's bikes the very first ride after usually traveling and getting them dialed in. And So we did end up getting this pedal fix, and we did end up getting getting on the road. And it was just a chance for me to relax in the shade because there was lots of shade spot to shade spot to water stop mm -hmm. to relax to to make sure you don't overheat and and i actually had a lot of uh water capacity so i wasn't a problem for me to make some of those long hauls but you could tell people that only had two bottles and they're running out and and one of the the best savior things on the ride was the nice people that had the water bottles that were getting handed out like oh, yeah, for free refreshing. yeah Oh, uh, and then you put that in the back of your jersey for five minutes, and it's just oh, it's just so nice. Yeah, that and all the like water sprinklers that people had, you know, shooting water at you, that was like lifesaver. I loved it all. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. But uh, I stayed in the campground, or I called it like near the baggage truck there, the slums, <laughs> which was the easiest, <laughs> the easiest way to load your gear in the morning because you don't have to travel very far. But there's not as many uh, open porta potties there, or kaibo as you guys like to call them. Mm -hmm. uh, so me and my friend, we only stayed in the main campground area once. Three nights, we got away from the main campground, and we stayed at like uh, in Storm City. We stayed at like a community college, and the other uh, Carol, we were off on the golf course. Mm -hmm. So we got away from the main crowds and kind of had some space to ourselves. But the absolute best uh, evenings that we had were these um, pre-homestays that I had, I had re arranged oh, nice. before Rag Brian. So I connected with friends of mine through the uh, leadership development organization that I'm a part of, Junior Chamber International. And they have an Iowa chapter and like there's people all over Iowa. So I messaged the state director and I said, I'm coming to your state for this rag bri and I'd love to meet people that live in your state. So she introduced me to a dozen different people all across Iowa oh, and four people picked me up. So there was one lady that lived in Ames. There was another connection that I had in Tama Toledo and I had a connection in Coralville. So I got to get out of the storm and I was in a safe bed that night. And then I had a guy to pick me up in Davenport and take me to my charter bus at the end of the trip. So these were amazing opportunities to, to charge our batteries and and a, like get a chance to get a shower on us and not have to set up our tent. And they, I, we're, we were able to actually get to a, a venue and watch a concert. So that night that I had a host in Ames was the first night that I got to see a concert at Drag Bride. And it was which crazy was Hairball. that night. Hairball was crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were rocking hard. They were rocking so hard. And our friend, our host was so nice. We got to her house. She had a tray of lasagna coming out of the oven ready for us. Oh. She had notes on her pillows that said, go Cyclones, have a good ride. <laughs> and then she took us downtown to party. In the morning, she had a full breakfast set up for us. She froze our water bottles. It was like exactly what we needed to recharge the batteries. Right. And I've seen lots of these connections getting made on the Facebook group. Like there was all kinds of hosting groups that did so well, I think, with matching uh, campers up with hosts that wanted to host. Yeah, it's amazing just the uh, uh, how small our world is, even though it's massively big, if that makes sense. You know, the connections that you can make and, you know, because of your part of, you're part of an organization in Canada, you found, you know, all of these connections in Iowa. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they were happy to host me. They were, I just had to ask, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, any, and this might be, we already may have just talked about, but any significant takeaways from your adventure, whether it's about people or about Iowa or about the country? Well, I wasn't a Leonard Skinner fan, <laughs> but after the concert in Des Moines, I was having a pretty good time. He's a pretty interesting character, but I was rocking out that night. That was a highlight for sure. Um as far as the people, it's just kindness knows no bounds. And after being 
uh, alone in Minnesota and just looking for somebody to talk to and, and finding my first Casey's and being amazed about the pizza in the back and <laughs> talking to the clerk way more than I should have because I was just alone <laughs> for so long during the day <laughs> to going to this event and seeing so many uh, enthusiasts and going to the expo and I call it cyclist heaven like whatever you needed any jersey any uh custom any fixes any tweaks to your bicycle like there's always there's somebody there that's gonna be able to help you uh so the the experience was amazing and and back to i gotta think of my next year's goal yeah Yeah. i was gonna say well back to that casey's comment uh for those who don't know what casey's is it's basically i would it's I mean, technically, it's a gas station, but it's kind of a convenience store, meaning you can get gas outside, but then you go inside and, you know, they have uh, like a kitchen, so they make food. Plus, you can get, you know, all, you know, sodas, beers, milk, water, any kind of food you can think of. But they're everything a cyclist needs. Yeah. Exactly. And they are like on Ragbri, it's like another bar. Like you go buy a Casey's and, you know, every gas pump is full of bicycles and people sitting on the ground <laughs> drinking beer and, you know, cold Gatorade. Cooling off. Yeah. And there was more than one time that I went into a Casey's to go stand in their beer fridge because I was like melting from the inside and it was so refreshing. But yeah, I'm, I'm a huge, I mean, I'm, I'm an, I am an Iowan, so I'm very familiar with Casey's, but it's always fun to hear when people who yeah. don't know what Casey's is are like, oh man, Casey's were awesome. Well, as a true bagger, I also know that there's usually a tap on the backside of the Casey's as well. So there's always free water at Casey's. Oh, excellent. Also. Good. And the ba- <laughs> and the bathrooms are usually like ice cold. So absolutely a nice absolutely. way to cool off. But so I interrupted you, but do you have a next big adventure scheduled? I'm still in the dream phase right now. I, I would like to dream really big and think about the Great Divide mountain bike ride. Ooh, yeah. Uh, not as a race necessarily, but as a just as a goal to get completed. But I need a new bike. Mine's a touring bike, and it's it's built for comfort, not for all the bumps and suspension and stuff that I need for a big ride like that. Mm. So I had fun watching the highlights of the Tour Divide on YouTube this year, and I think that's getting more and more popular, and it's nice to see people leaving from Banff, Canada, which is only five hours away from me, Mm. to start those epic journeys. And the fastest guy does it in just less than 16 days. They sleep (laughs) three, four hours a night, and it's 100% unsupported, so you can't help your friend out. You can't buy him an ice cream cone, but and you can't share a hotel with the guy. But you can race beside him. And, right, and it's and, grueling yeah. terrain, like grueling. Oh, uh, through yeah, uh, Montana and Idaho and Wyoming and New Mexico, Colorado, and co- I think uh, Iowa did a great job of posting and definitely had the most riders. And then I, I personally see more Colorado uh, guests after that. And it was so cool to see people's license plates because I would ride up on people and sh- like ask them a question by their name. And they'd be a little shocked at first, but I was super friendly and it gave you something to do. And then you, you usually ran beside the people for either majority of the day or yeah. multiple days. So it was nice to get to know people. Yeah, definitely. I'm bummed that I did not see you when I was on the bike. Um, I luckily got to meet you when you came to the Just Go Bike podcast booth, but um, I was looking for your um, your panniers, but I never saw you along the route. Mm. Uh, and then the hottest day, the most challenging day for me was getting into Coralville. And I ran into you at the Iowa beer bus, and that was like the stop right before Coralville. Yeah. And I was leaking pretty hard. I was sweating like crazy, and I filled up a water bottle there, and I got that photo with uh, the Iowa beer bus guys. And I just kept rolling. It was a hot day, that one. It was very hot, yeah. So if people want to check out some of either your Ragbri blog or just some other of your adventures that you do, tell them either your website or social media channels. Yeah, uh, I I 
started blogging, cycle blogging, with the intention of creating positive content that will be around for a long time, for hopefully history. And so uh, inspired by a friend of mine who made a long distance cycle tour eight years ago from Canada down to California, and he wrote about it in his blog. And I followed along very uh, on the ball, and I just couldn't wait for him to post. But it's this website, crazyguywithabike.com, and anybody can sign up for an account there. And every night I get to my tent and I log in and I write a couple paragraphs and I upload a couple photos about my day and my journey and how things are going and any thoughts on my mind. And these journals are there and you can go to that website and search Jamie from Canada and see my adventures for the last four years on this website. So it's pretty cool, including my cross Canada journey and my Minnesota through Iowa journey and, uh, Instagram as well, Jamie from Canada. Sweet. And I'll put uh, the links to both of those in our show notes so people can go check it out. So, well, Jamie from Canada, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and telling yeah, your that story. Was so fun. Super cool. So, appreciate it. Thanks, Merv. Keep doing what you're doing. All right. Well, listeners, that's it for this week. Email me at morphologypodcast at gmail.com if you have a topic or the name of a cyclist you find interesting. Support my podcast at patreon.com slash morphology and visit both my Facebook and Instagram pages for daily entertainment. I have more great episodes in the pipeline, so I hope you continue to be a Morphology Podcast listener. 